All right, guys, this is a video what looking at the laning phase for killing. Reckless versus Doublelift, Jin versus Senna. Uh, so they got Alistar, Flash, AD, Flash. He used both uh, his summoners, and Rakan has no ignite. So the first thing he does when he comes to the lane is wave two. Uh, they both lost melees, essentially. Uh, he slow pushes, which is the correct thing to do. Now, do what you see the Rakan doing is the Rakan moves up like this. Jin is looking for this. So Jin doesn't really want to be here. If he was fine giving up this minion, then he could contest forward, and then they could play into this. But they don't want to. That, or at least Reckless doesn't want to. He's he's back. He takes this, he sets up his Q so he can get last hits. Maybe he pushes a little bit faster than he wants to, because it's not going to be as clean of a wave 3 crash as like, you would normally do, but... I mean, do you really want to give up gold? Not really. So here, he could have technically saved his Q. He'll take this, he can take this, and if he hits it soon enough, like hits it now, then he'll have his uh, next uh, shot for this, and he saves his Q. But what you can see here is he's going to contest with fourth, um, fourth shot, but double lift has Q up. So Doublelift gets 50 HP back, so he took like 90, but then he got 50 back, so he, it was only like minus 40, whereas he lost, well, as you can tell, a lot more. So that trade, not very good. And he didn't zone him off any minions, so the reason to do that trade is like kind of not, like there's, it was kind of pointless. So if you notice, Nidalee shows here, so both junglers are on top side. Um, he has this available to him, so he can always just retreat back if he wants to. Uh, this means that they don't necessarily have to get this wave in now, uh, and they're not going to be pressured by Nidalee either, so they can look to get wave 3 in or wave 4 in. Like, it doesn't really matter. So look, unlike the last trade we saw where there was nothing to be contested, this, he's contesting this minion here. It has, like, no HP. And either double if that's the last hit it and then take the trade, or he trades onto him and then he loses the minion. So double if opts to trade on the minion. So we see Nilly by the red. Here he's just kind of chilling out at this point. He throws a Q down, and the Q ends up bouncing onto Alistar, so he got a little chip damage. Perfectly fine, no problem. So notice he moves back into the brush, and right when he does that, Rakan goes. So he's moving back, and he's moving forward. This is honestly not optimal whatsoever because, well, <laughs> he can't DPS right away. Now the nice thing about Jin is at least he can use W, right? So he has some form of follow up, but it's not as good as the trade could be. Also, he does it in a sense where he gets caught by turret by the tower, and if Alistar was faster to react with pulverize, it could be even worse for Hilly. So the play in general is just not good by Hilly. So they get the wave in, cool. He's sitting on 900 gold. Usually, you go for the B up, right? He's only 30 off. Sorry, 350 off. But they decide to face. And there's a couple things so that they, they could have done. Technically, he could have stayed, let the wave pull out. And then Jin's just chilling here. And then Rakan is playing with Evelyn. Like, Rakan's moving up and playing with Evelyn without a base. However, by doing it this way, Rakan gets a phase, a Jin gets a phase, of blood. and then Rakan still gets to join Evelyn. And the wave is perfectly fine for Jin. So Rakan has boots, and he has a pink. Should be an opera. So you're gonna notice that he's gonna last hit all these minions. He doesn't want to fast push or anything like that because his support's not here um and he wants to also still deny whatever cs he can from his opponents and this keeps him safe right so why not do this? alistar shows 
so one thing to, to, to make note about this is like Alistar gets free scouting information here, but in reality, it's just he should just be looking to cover probably his Krugs and probably like around here. Uh, the reason for that is because if this wave is going out and Senna has to catch this and they both have no flash, I mean, like, if you have no flashes, you really don't want to contest this anyways, right? Like, this this seems kind of, like, spooky to be contesting with all your flashes yet. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not sure why Bai wanted to do that way, but, you know, the wave starts, you know, pushing back in. Reckless like, starts turning the wave to him because he decided to... This minion here? I don't know if this minion would make a big difference. I mean, there's three, three melees to... Two melees left at this point, so, like, probably not. Um... But he last hits it when it wasn't being contested. And he's turning the wave back. So they're contesting this. For some odd reason, Biofrost thinks it's legal to actually touch this, even though the wave is coming into here. So Senna just has a small timer to contest this. But Jin is okay with how this situation is being played out. And technically, they never saw where Evelyn went yet. They don't know if Evelyn returned back to boss size, the base, whatever. And he does. My work. There was really little point in testing that, basically. The only thing they had to know was if Evelyn was on their drugs and looking for a guy. And the chances of them of being able to successfully die is probably not very high unless they have Lucian joining. So Reckless is just fine taking the trade into him. It really doesn't matter, right? Like it's just if if Senna hits, then the range minions like target on her. Like so, yeah, it really, it's not it's not really bad for them. So they know that Nidalee could be on Krugs and be on bot side. They're not 100 sure. That's why they're starting to back off. Needs more. Uh, since it's only two minions, it's only two minions, it's not enough to ever hold a freeze. This wave is going to come back out, which means that Hilly identifies this, and Hilly's going to start looking around and just, like, use his downtime, basically. And so then Jin just, like, chills out. Like, he doesn't have to do anything. So you're going to go forward. You notice Jin's just hiding here. He's just waiting for a last hit, right? And it also, by not showing, they're just kind of, like, uh, so what's he doing? Like, he, he probably didn't base because, like, the timer's weird, right? Like, he doesn't have much gold, which means, like, oh, maybe he's, like, around here or something. Like, both of them are here, so, like, this is really dangerous, right? Uh, so it's just, like, a really simple way to use the time effectively without doing anything. <laughs> so he shows, he not shows, he starts pushing this wave. Technically, this wave is pulling. And Evelyn is on top Needs side. More. But the only reason why he starts actually pushing faster is because he, or, uh, Nidalee shows here. So they could technically still pull the wave. Uh, it just means they would have to trim it and try to like freeze it in front for as indefinitely um, for as long as they can, right? And then maybe they bounce it back and then they do a dragon timer off that or something. But in this case, he's decided that I'd rather just shove this in and try to deny more CS. Because in all reality, uh, I, I don't think any player would reshove with the idea that, oh, if Nidalee's top, but my Evelyn is top too, that we're going to be doing this, right? Like we're going to be doing like Dragon or whatever. Perhaps they, perhaps they did plan it far ahead and they saw that the bot scuttle was going to come up, so they naturally wanted to prep it in a way that allowed Evelyn to safely make it. Uh, but Nidalee's still topside, so the chance of her being back down here is like, oh no, that high. This is my love. So he throws a Q out. Just do some chip this damage. Is my love. Uh, this is not really necessary. Um, like he's going for like I don't know. Like I don't know why he's really contesting like that hit there as double look, like double look. But um, yeah, there's not there's not too much value in there. Oh, so technically Rakan could this just be, play, be playing here versus here. 
Because again, there's no Nilly, right? Like, Nilly should not be down here whatsoever. So Rakan can just kind of pressure the W. And then they can look to make trades that way. And then the trades are actually more effective. Because Rakan can even technically walk up and kind of IO the Alistar. And if the Alistar decides to combo, they try to go hard on the Rakan, the Rakan can probably escape. And it's fine. This is my love. But he decides to sit back. They're just letting Jin do most of the carrying. He goes to throw out. You know, it's like the damage is like pretty irrelevant. So this here, technically they want to get the wave in bot. Uh, you can't really... Sh hmm. I gotta go back a little bit. Technically they want to get this wave in if they can. Uh, but what's going to end up happening is that these guys are actually going to be able to just like hold it here, right? Uh, the only reason why they let that happen is because they want to contest the try, like whatever's in the try brush, because he's looking for the crab, right? So if they can cut this area off from Nidalee, and this is covered here already, Nidalee has like nowhere to go without being spotted besides like a cross, which is extremely dangerous for her. So they're basically just, you know, covering all bases for this crab contest. Art requires a certain crew. So wave is a little awkward. They want to crash it. The melees are dying pretty quick. Now there's four minions here, which means that it can technically be held for a freeze, which is not yes, too the great. Gun is ironic. An ally has that been minion dies, so it looks like it's gonna mostly bounce out, but it would be slow. Like, probably too slow. Uh, top lane dies. He dies to Syndra TP. There's nothing to really worry about there, like Syndra TP is gone, it's fine. Yes. The gun they have is good cover jump bot to see if Nidalee shows up. Has been slain. He doesn't really need to throw his Q out right away unless he's like he wants to keep going at it again. And in this case, the way he's viewing this is so again, normally like you don't have to like just use it right away on this. But if you look at his gold, it's 1220, right? So he's only 880 off from BF. So in that sense for him, it's just like, okay, like, we just want to we just want to get this in, I'll get my base, and then uh, we're good to go. Let's just this base easy. So now you see Rakan is actually, like, covering the side brush a little bit more. They still don't know where Nidalee is. At least I don't think they do. I don't know. Let me just double check. I don't want to be an idiot. We know she showed there. Yeah, we we haven't seen her yet. So this is why this is why they're a little is hesitant on uh, I'm playing it off. Everyone is no, Evelyn is in there. Right. Kill. Also, the way Alistar, if you notice what Alistar is doing, he's posturing back and forth between this little area, which means his contested area is like here. And so he's kind of giving respect to that. Because if he initiates and then Nilly just suddenly pops out from here, she can maybe make up some of the distance. Though I think it's not necessarily so bad for Nidalee's time while Evelyn's is kind of power clearing. Like just using your heal, and I think he can only I think he can use his heal to escape. It makes it kind of work. Now here's the interesting thing. So they're gonna clear this, right? So Khan's gonna walk and hit this. By him initiating auto attacks, he's pulling this, all this shit, forward up to here. And it also means these minions, like all these minions here, are auto attacking these ones. So these guys are just staying healthy, and then these guys are just getting fucked. So this wave actually will end up bouncing. And he takes that, that opportunity, that initiated uh, trade by double lift. Uh, as he's, as he's I swear this performance is the last 
but I lie every time. So, if you look at what, what, what Burkhan is doing, he basically stayed on the off chance that they could push this wave king faster. He also was just on boots, so there's this also a chance that he really just doesn't have it in his body. So he kind of just keeps himself in a decent spot. And if they try to shove it recklessly and he doesn't show whatsoever, he might even have an opening. But again, with the wave size, with Evelyn rotating towards top side, the chances of you actually doing something is like kind of small. to stay he's holding these two minions I cannot be good. this wave is essentially Fiction. just like, it's like a full reset they know that Senna needs to her base so he starts shoving faster technically technically with how this turned out when he gets here they have, they have all like, they can use this if they want to. If Evelyn's basing on top side, there's a low chance that they're going to be playing for Herald unless Rakan shifts upwards. But technically Senna could move up too. In that case, it makes more sense for them to actually slow build the bot wave versus fast pushing. Uh, and then just having a bot wave. Cause you know since your TP's Action. down, I don't know about top lane, like I have no idea what's going on with top lane, right? But they quickly shove this in, they get one plate, they, ba they back off, they get dragon, right? But they could have just done dragon anyways, irregardless of what he did here. Because he has this, he could have held it. And then he could have fast pushed it, and he's still doing dragon naturally. Because even Lucian, they would have been unaffected, unaffected, and Rakan would have moved too. So most likely, with Senna showing up pretty late, is that she was rotating towards Harold and through it, and then backtrack change directions into bot when they secured it, or knew they were going to secure it, uncontested. Death is certain, but killing doesn't have to be ugly. So Khan ended up taking a base to go to top sign in case there's a hero play, which there is, and that leaves Reckless to be down here on his own. It's three ranged minions. He will lose some minions, but it will come back to him. Let's start the show. The only way it doesn't is if like they pull the wave repeatedly. So they just like that. Mad. All artists are mad. Uh, he has a decent lead. Uh, it's not like he he might not have as big of a lead uh, because he got the kill from first blood, right? And Alistar had no flash initiation, so it makes it kind of hard to be really to the gin. But all in all, like what you can take away from this is have patience when you're doing your last hits. Be very mindful of what abilities you have up, what last hits are they going for when you do your trades, and then, uh, yeah, just, just pay attention towards where the jungler is. Pretty simple.